If you know me, then you know one of my favorite pastimes is reviewing Miss Namibia's entry form every single year because it's just, it's miles long and there's so much unnecessary stuff on there and it always angers me and causes hilarity at the same time. But this year, when Miss South Africa entries open, I thought to myself, you know what, let me go have a little browse at what the Miss South Africa entry form is saying and what their terms and conditions are and what they're asking for, etc, etc. And needless to say, I was surprised. First of all, when did Miss South Africa change their age restrictions? Um, it says from 20 to 30. So you can turn 30 in the year that you compete at Miss South Africa. That is, to me, so interesting. I always thought Miss South Africa started at 18 and ended at 28, which is the standard. But no, apparently Miss South Africa is allowed to be 30 years old. Secondly, did you know Miss South Africa contestants are not allowed to say anything to anyone about the details of their journey as a Miss South Africa contestant? Because they literally sign an NDA. They are not allowed to share any communication that they get from the Miss South Africa organization. And I think this is done in the age of social media to prevent sort of leaks. I didn't know Miss South Africa contestant had to sign NDAs when they entered. That's a bit, that's a bit tough. But I mean, I suppose the Miss South Africa organization reserves the right to, you know, have their information and stuff like that secure. So I guess I, I guess I can understand why they would want girls to sign NDAs, especially because Miss South Africa is so popular. Another thing that I found so shocking no runners up from the past two editions are allowed to enter again this year. So runners up from 2022 and 2021 are not allowed to enter this year. So Muratwe and Zimi from Miss South Africa 2021, as well as Lebohang and obviously Ayanda because she's going to Miss Supranational, they're not allowed to compete again. And this makes me so upset because I wanted Zimi to be able to compete again. How terrible is that? But if you weren't a runner-up at the past two editions, you're maybe a runner-up in another year and you haven't represented South Africa overseas yet, then you can still enter Miss South Africa. So for example, you know, Natasha, who was second runner-up in 2020, she already went to Miss Universe, so she's not allowed to compete again. But if you were a runner-up before 2019 or in 2019 and you didn't represent South Africa overseas, then you're more than welcome to enter Miss South Africa again. The last part of the terms and conditions that were interesting to me is basically if there are any receipts of you being racist, sexist, discriminatory in any way, or evidence that you have bribed someone, then you are immediately gone, immediately disqualified, which of course, as you should be. <laughs> now, of course, with Miss Universe changing their rules to include mothers and wives and divorced women, etc, 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 there are new fields on the Miss South Africa entry forms to accommodate this. So they are asking you what is your marital status. It used to be single only. Now you can put unmarried, not married, divorced, etc. And then they ask you whether or not you're a parent or a guardian. And then you just state whether or not you're a parent or a guardian or none or whatever. So obviously that is something that they have had to include in order to know more about you. Now, of course, as has been the tradition for a couple of years now, the Contestants entering Miss South Africa have to upload an introduction video to any of their social media platforms that they choose and then they have to hashtag Miss SA 2023 and also tag the Miss South Africa account. But the way that the Miss South Africa organization actually sees all of these is the girls have to link this video in their entry form. The Miss South Africa organization also asks the girls to disclose all of their social media accounts and to make their social media accounts public for judging purposes. Now, I don't know if this is especially just to view their entry or introductory video 
or if they're going to be judging the girls' social media as a whole. I mean, we know Twitter is a culprit for um, body slamming that one contestant, I think it was in 2019 or 2020, who had some racist tweets surface. So I think the Miss South Africa organization, if you pick your favorites, if you pick the top 30 or whatever it's going to be, also maybe just go and vet every single one of them in order to avoid embarrassment like that. But that's not the only video that the girls are asked to make. The girls are actually asked to privately submit a video in this form talking about what inspired them to enter Miss South Africa, what they want from the title, what they want to achieve, and also what their plans are if they don't get chosen as a semi-finalist. So they're asked to do three videos in total. This one is also meant to be submitted privately in a little private box that they add there is the girls are being asked to film their bedrooms. Bruh. They're being asked to do bedroom tours for the Miss South Africa organization. Why are they asking this? Like, the only reason that I can think of why they're asking the girls to do bedroom tours is to see whether or not they can sell a space i don't know because the miss south africa organization they always have miss south africa living in this amazing santon penthouse and inevitably every single miss south africa ever has had to do a tour or whatever of this penthouse so maybe it's for that maybe it's to see if they're neat and tidy or i don't know have good taste i would be so embarrassed to show my bedroom to people who i don't even know who's going to be watching that video first of all yeah it's to me it's very strange request but the things we do for miss south africa hey then of course a field that i did not expect to see on the miss south africa entry form is gender identity and pronouns so in the gender identity of course you have the choices between male, female, non-binary, uh, not listed, and prefer not to say. And then they also have a category for pronouns, of course, where you get to choose she, her, they, them, he, him, and then also prefer not to say. Uh, some people have their own pronouns, which they make up out of thin air, which, I don't know, I feel like if Miss South Africa was truly woke, they could have accommodated for that. I'm kidding, of course. Then there are some fun agree or disagree questions. So these are questions, they give you a drop down list. You can click strongly agree, agree, neutral, disagree, and strongly disagree. And one of the first one is I am a warrior. Now, illiterate people might read this as I am a warrior which is definitely not the same thing. In fact, it's possibly the opposite because if you worry too much on the battlefield, you will die. And I think hilarity is going to ensue when there are girls who click strongly agree on I am a warrior <laughs> because then the Miss South Africa organization are definitely going to think that these girls stress easily too much. No rejected. Then there are some very silly disagree or agree questions based on the girl's character traits and there are lots of these, lots of these and they're like I make friends easy, I get along with other people easy, I like to tidy up, I am neat and my question is what are the girls supposed to say here? Are you just asking them to lie? Because if you're going to ask me am I neat? Of course I'm going to say strongly agree. I don't want you to think I'm some sort of garbage gremlin. If you ask me if I make friends easily, of course I'm going to say agree. I don't want you to think I'm going to be, you know, picking fights with my fellow contestants. Then there are the opposites. Uh, I get angry easy or I like to argue. These are genuine things that the girls are supposed to click agree or disagree on. I get angry easy? Of course I do! I'm not gonna tell you that though! So obviously they just want to be lied to and 99% of contestants are going to lie at least on 3 or 4 of these questions. <laughs> and it got me thinking, why are they even asking this, you know? Are they vetting girls 
for crown chasers also because crown chasers is actually a big part of Miss South Africa this year and the Miss South Africa terms and conditions. I didn't touch on it when I went through the terms and conditions, but they said a lot about crown chasers, about you know giving permission for your uh, face to be used on crown chasers or whatever and whatever and whatever. So my question is, are they perhaps using these disagree, agree questions sort of to vet the two or three girls that they actually need to add some spice and drama for crown chases this year because i'm telling you last year's crown chases it was the first one she will forever live in my heart but crown chases last year was boring i, I cannot remember one interesting thing that happened on crown chases last year and i watched the first few episodes i don't think i even finished the whole season so I definitely think that they might need to add some spice on crowd chases this year in order to keep people engaged. And then lastly, they have a very interesting question which you have to answer, you know, among other questions. Um, this is just one particular question that I found very interesting and it's how would your enemy describe you? And I actually never thought about that. How would your enemy describe you? And I just know some of the girls are going to say, I have no enemies. Call me Mother Teresa. <laughs> I wouldn't know. I don't have any enemies. Legally, I cannot use the words that my enemies would use to describe me, actually. One thing I did enjoy and appreciate about the Miss South Africa 2023 terms and conditions, however, is that they are strongly against nepotism and are combating nepotism because no friend or family of, of anyone working at the Miss South Africa organization or at Sun International, which is the parent company of Miss South Africa, or at any of the affiliated sponsors are allowed to enter Miss South Africa. Anyway, guys, let me know what you think about Miss South Africa's wacky entry form this year. I found it so interesting. Actually, just I love going through entry forms because sometimes they enrage me like miss namibia's one sometimes and i think it was was it miss world kenya that had this positively medieval entry form oh my goodness even saying that girls weren't allowed to have like any blemishes on their face i mean who do you want barbie anyway so sometimes entry forms really grind my gears but with miss south africa's entry form it really just it abused me it, it was amusing to go through like especially the bedroom tour what the hell what so let me know what you guys think i will be keeping of course an eye on the girls who are entering miss south africa entries for miss south africa close on the 5th of may which is actually just around the corner so it's really scary girls don't have a lot of time to enter miss south africa they're like okay you get five minutes and then we're closing and that's that and if you're not here you're not here and uh, yeah try again next time good luck <laughs> i love seeing sort of the confidence growth in miss south africa the past few years and the fact that they can open entries for like seven days and still get tons and tons and tons and tons to choose from anyway guys thank you so much for watching if you haven't already please subscribe and i will see you in the next one bye